안녕하십니까? 서울 삼성 치과 원장 전진입니다. Hello, this is c h u n Jin. I'm from Seoul Samsung Dental Clinic. So today we are going to talk about implant prosthesis setting process and also about occlusal adjustment. 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. So let's look at it step by step. In the model, if it doesn't fit, as I said, it would not fit in the mouth. So in the model, the direction of the abutment, prosthesis, and transfer jig fit, as well as the contact and strength with the adjustment teeth and the border extension all needs to be confirmed. Even if the prosthesis fits in the model, sometimes it doesn't fit in the mouth. And if it does not fit, Then between model and the or on the mouth, what is the difference? How you are going to resolve them? Needs to be confirmed. So it seems here there is a rotational error. And in the model, if you see whether it fit, you loosen the healing abutment and connect the abutment. Before abutment connection, you have to check. Whether there is any bone interference and whether there is inflammation due to the alien materials, uh, and in connecting abutment, uh, you can use transfer jig. If you use non-ex abutment, you have to use transfer jig. And after delivering transfer jig, you have to see whether it fits with the adjustment teeth and abutment. So between the abutment and jig, there is no gap, and like. Whether it fits like it did in the uh, model needs to be checked, and whether it's seated uh, stably with the adjacent teeth, you have to confirm that uh, to use the jig for the abutment connection. Checking that jig is uh, fitting and whether it's fitting to the adjacent teeth, you then connect it with the abutment. After connection, you use hand driver. Tighten it, and you don't use torque driver until you see that abutment is stable. And then you take X-ray photo. Here, when hexa abutment is used, uh, it was taken on the conical side, whether there is a gap, and the hexa lower side, whether the gap is um, bigger than average, or of course bigger than standard needs to be checked. If the non-hex abutment is used, the connection part is bigger, and if Uh, it can be uh, stable, but it can be an issue with the positioning. Here, left side, between you see there is a gap. On the right side, it's fully connected, and the gap there is no gap. So, fixture and abutment. Even the connection area, there is a slight, small difference of 0.1 degrees. Uh, there could be an area where the stress is concentrated. The conical angle uh, design. A lot of different dynamics needs to be considered. Uh, after checking that it fits in the X-ray, you put in the torque. Mini is 20 and regular is 30 uh, newton centimeters used for tightening. For screw, you have to uh, tighten repeatedly. After tightening once, uh, two or three cotton roll needs to be uh, used for patient to take a bite. And if there is a settling and the clamping force of the screw, in other words, a pre preload will go down. And to compensate for that, another with the recommended uh, torque, you tighten. 
And in connecting abutment, then after that, you put in the prosthesis. If it's tightly contact, then the occlusion bit sometimes becomes too high because it doesn't sit fully. So you have to check proximal contact beforehand. In the dental journal, I was not able to check, but in the Google patent, it says, that between a natural teeth, 20 to 125 nucleon is the average distance, so you can take that as a reference. To check the contact, dental floss is used most often. If the dental floss does not go through, then it's too tight. If it goes too easy, then there could have food infection. It's different by brand, but mostly 30 to 230 uh, micronewton is the average dental floss thickness. So when using this floss, uh, used misto and distal teeth, uh, so all this needs to be uh, checked. And here, number six is implant restored, not only five and six, but between uh, four and six, you also put in dental floss. Before prosthesis, it was not so, but after that, and if there's a tight contact between five and six, then it means the, the five was majorly pushed. Oil pen can be used to check the contact. In the contact there, you mark it, and in the early contact area, it would erase. But you cannot know the strength, so you have to use along with the dental floss. Number six, it was marked, but as I explained in number five and number four, you check the strength with dental floss, and number six, you check the early contact area, and that can make more easily the adjustments. If you use the check button, the strength and the contact point, can be all be visible with the holder it's hard uh, to uh, put in so sometimes use a bracket tweezer so the bracket uh, check bite thickness is different but i use what is 12 microphone so if i if the check bite comes out with slightly resistant i find that things or depending on the oral condition i make further adjustments And in the adjacent uh, contact area needs to be angled uh, buckly, that is the ideal position. And in rather than point contact, surface contact is more favorable. The contact uh, shape is the mirror image, the adjacent area. The ideal area is where rubber two ball meets each other. And that is the uh, ideal contact. And this is side view if possible. Long surface contact will be more favorable. Adjacent teeth or the opposite arch area, teeth shape can be checked and you can copy that. And in summary, dental floss, you can know the contact strength, but it's not easy to know the position of the contact or open. It's easy to know the uh, location or position, but not about the strength. The check bot, you can know the strength as well position, but it's not easy to use. In occlusion adjustment, visionary, auditory, and tactile senses can all be used. First, with your eyes, you can check early contact using check bite, and sound could also be a good reference page the sound between two or three teeth being com contact versus many teeth coming in contact is different. And also with hands, fremitus can be checked. So tactile senses can be of, also be of, be of help. Peter Dawson said with using check bite, on the posterior side you have dots, on the anterior side there are lines, um, and that is the ideal uh, position. So anterior contact or posterior only comes in the contact in different movement, so there is a mutual compensation in other words. So for a partial edentulous restoration, before trying in the prosthesis, the changes in the orally needs to be minimum. The patient's habitual bite and mastication pattern needs to be maintained 
in creating prosthesis that would increase a patient comfort. If there's no region, then existing guide, a mistake, and pattern needs to be maintained. Now, prosthesis, if it's too high, you have to adjust that area first. So before trying the prosthesis, you have to check the occlusal sound and contact area until, and you have to make the adjustment of the high area first. And then checking the marked dot is important, but the ones that is marked and checked by it is also good to know a lot of things. So you check the strength of the occlusion first, and after trying in, uh, you have to adjust the height until it becomes more even. So in central occlusion adjustment, there are a few principles. First, occlusion strength needs to be distributed as much as possible. And secondly, the axis, the occlusion force needs to be given, and lateral force, it's better to remove. Thirdly, in the cusper incline, if it's contact surface to surface, then you change to dot to surface. So if you check central, then you have to check the lateral side. Then on buckle side, you put in the finger, fill the frameters. So in central movement, the lateral movement, which uh, T's in which order it's working, you can check. First, on the working side, on the lower side, moving on the right to right or to the left to left. So as central occlusion, before putting in the prosthesis, you have to see lateral uh, guidance of the adjacent teeth. So you could use frameters and other things to check. In working movement, functional cost and non-functional cost on the opposing teeth is in contact. So reducing non-working cost by a slope area is important. And if you do that well, then on the upper side, buckle upper and lower side, the lingual side, will be cut. So that is the principle in the occlusion adjustment, B-U-L-L. Now, this is how the occlusion is adjusted. The red area of the check bite is used for lateral movement, and black area is used for the central adjustment. Or if you see the far right left photo, the red area is where there is a working interference. The first photo, number five, and on the bus cusp side, you see the, uh, the dot of the occlusion and the work interference on the buckle side. If it's removed, then new uh, occlusal point appears. In the second photo, this is the marginal edge. Uh, there's also another point of occlusion. And until now, touching with the finger, there was a movement. So you can see that there's a still working interference. And the third photo is making additional adjustment. And the third photo, this the marginal ridge. There's on the palatal side, the uh, occlusion dot appears. And the last photo is after all the adjustments. Without lines, uh, it only has points. Now, on the non-working side, occlusion adjustment needs to be made when non-working side between functional cusp comes into contact. Hence, on the upper side, cusp area and the lower side, the slope area needs to be removed. The cusp tip and what is close to groove needs to be remade, and the lines on the inside uh, needs to be eliminated. Using the black area of the check by use lateral movement and central side adjusted with the lead color area. So slope area is uh, removed, so the only point area would remain. There are different wax-up techniques, but NAT wax-up technique is something uh, you can think about. So here you have the concept of the occlusal compass to interpret the occlusal side. So in, in as the teeth moves, the occlusal compass is created and it's uh, used to create crown. So if you understand this concept of occlusal compass in uh, occlusal adjustment, uh, it will be helpful. Anterior guidance to the adjacent natural teeth and uh, implant only working as supporting area is important. And upper side aesthetics are important. So you have to adjust on the lingual side. On the lower side, the cutting area diagonally is important.
So with your finger, feeling firmitus, let the process stable and have a consistent contact on the lower side was used for crucial adjustment. So for number 41 was in the contact first, but on the cutting area, buckle line was reduced and number 31 and number 32 came in contact. And when you feel with the finger, I checked that it was consistent and then the adjustment was completed. On when there is a lower uh, movement in the adjacent lateral teeth, anterior and lateral movement needs to be there, and the prosthesis should not be in uh, strong contact with the opposing teeth. So, in summary, in implant component connection, you have to check with the X-ray whether it's uh, connecting well and there's under, no under seating. Uh, adjustment uh, area and you check before occlusal adjustment. Make sure it's not too tight. If there's a in fit and good contact, then you do first central uh, occlusion adjustment in the habitual bite. And once the central occlusion is formed, then uh, you adjust on the lateral uh, side uh, and the slopes. And that will complete the occlusal adjustment. So I talked about how the implant process is set and occlusal adjustment is made. So processes, you put in something artificial in your mouth. So before and after uh, processes, all changes needs to be minimum for the patient's comfort. And with that, I would like to conclude my lecture. Thank you very much.